Manchester United have been offered the chance to sign Jeremy Frimpong this summer from Bayern Leverkusen. Joao Neves to PSG deal all but done. Does this now mean that Manuel Ugarte will be signing for United? These are some of the stories we will be discussing on this evening's show. But before we get into that, please do me one small favor. Smash a like on this episode. Let's try and see a thousand likes on today's video. And if this is your first time watching, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm live every single day at 8.30, 1.30 and 6. If you want to keep up to date with all of your latest Manchester United transfer news and talk, this is the best way to do it. Everyone is welcome. Please do get involved. Right. I want to start the show off by talking about Joao Neves. So this story broke in the last couple of minutes from Fabrizio Romano. He is confirming that PSG and Benfica are now closing in on a deal for Joao Neves. He says there was a positive round of talks today. PSG want to get the deal sealed this week. The details currently being discussed are a 70 million euros fee plus Rube, uh, Renato Sanchez. Okay. He says, here we go, expected very soon. Now, you're probably sat there thinking, what does that mean for Manchester United? Why are you talking about PSG? Why are you talking about Benfica? Well, we know that PSG want to use the money that we give them for Manuel Ugarte to go and sign Joao Neves. Do you think it's a coincidence that they want 70 million euros for Manuel Ugarte and they've now just agreed a deal with PSG, uh, sorry, with Benfica for 70 million euros for Joao Neves? I don't think it is. And I said this to you many, many times before that... PSG are trying to play us. They're trying to get us to overpay on Manuel Ugarte so that they, they can then go and use that money to buy Joao Neves. And they're literally, that is exactly what they're trying to do. They want 70 million for Manuel Ugarte and now they've just agreed a deal with Benfica for 70 million for Joao Neves. It's literally taking the money from us and giving it to Benfica. And I'll be honest, I think they're getting the better deal. I think in the long run, Joao Neves will be a better signing for PSG than Manuel Ugarte will be for Manchester United. I like Manuel Ugarte. I think he's a good player, but he's not worth 70 million euros. I'm sorry. He's probably worth 40, maybe 50 million euros. PSG paid 60 million for him one year ago. He sat on the bench for most of the second half of the season. Right? And now they want a 10 million euro profit. Like, it doesn't make sense. But what I can say is this. The fact that uh, PSG are proceeding with this deal for Joao Neves, they've agreed a fee, uh, personal terms have been agreed, and here we go, as Fabrizio says, is expected this week. It does mean that the Manuel Ugarte deal will now probably move forward. I'm still just a little bit all over the place about it. I think he's a good player, but I just think if we pay them anywhere near to 70 million, we're getting completely ripped off. They want to sell him. They've already found his replacement, as I just said. They've already agreed a deal for his replacement, and he's surplus to requirements. So we should be going back to them and saying, you know what, we'll give you £40 million. Pounds. Take it or leave it. And PSG will probably have to do it because they need the money to go and sign Joao Neves. There is no way on earth that Joao Neves is worth the same amount as Manuel Ugarte. I'm sorry. But I'll be interested to see what you guys think. Like, how do you feel about this whole situation that's unfolding? Do you think Manchester United should just sack Manuel Ugarte off and just go in for Joao Neves? Rival PSG with the €70 million Euro bid? Because the more I think about it, I think we should. I do. I know he's not a CDM. I know we desperately need a CDM. But when you've got people like Fofana available for only 30 million euros, you've got Amrabat available for like 10 million euros. You could go and get Joao Neves for 70 and go and sign uh, Fofana for 30 and you're sorted. You're literally sorted then. So I am a little bit torn on this whole situation. You know, I would love to see Manuel Ugarte <clears throat> and Manchester United. I just want to make sure that the price is right. And at the moment... This 70 million euros is rubbing me up the wrong way. Um, but I do think that we will probably get a here we go for uh, Joao Neves very soon. That's what Fabrizio said. And I think as that happens, um, it will then be the kind of domino effect. That's what we always see in football. When one player goes to another club, it means that they then have to sell someone else. And that player will be Manuel Ugarte and he will most likely come to Manchester United. So for those of you who are screaming for Manuel Ugarte, it looks like you will uh, have your prayers answered because effectively they've already agreed a deal for his replacement. He wants to leave. He's agreed terms with Manchester United. He's given us the green light. So that probably will, be ha will happen. Obviously, the crazy thing is, right, you go back a month ago, Sorry, you go back to yesterday. Um, 
my brain's all over the place with this Manuel Ugarte story. Fabrizio said yesterday that Manchester United remain in discussions with PSG for Manuel Ugarte after the green light from the player and personal terms were agreed last week. He says that there is currently no agreement between the two clubs. But obviously this story today uh, with Joao Neves agreeing a deal to PSG will be the domino. The first piece of the domino has fallen and the next piece will be Manuel Ugarte. And then if Ugarte comes to United, it might mean that Eriksen goes or McTominay goes. And the domino effect will continually fall all the way down to the bottom. So, yeah, that's the latest on that one. Joao Neves to PSG is pretty much a here we go. And I think that this will now mean that Manuel Ugarte to Manchester United will be a here we go very soon, I think. Uh, probably in the next one week is my prediction. But that's just my guess. So don't quote me on that. Um, okay, let's move on from that, though. I want to move over to Jeremy Frimpong. So this is coming out from multiple different German outlets in the last couple of minutes. And they are reporting that Manchester United have apparently been offered to sign Jeremy Frimpong this summer. Obviously, we know that he has a release clause, which is around £35 million. Pounds. 23 years of age. Obviously had an incredible season last year in the Bundesliga. Unbelievable. One of the best players uh, in the Bundesliga last season. I like Jeremy Frimpong. I really, really do. I just think that for what we need at the moment, he's not really the profile. We need a right back. And Jeremy Frimpong isn't a right back, really. If anything, he's a right wing back, which means that he can play in a back five, which is a formation we don't play. So... As much as I like him and as much as I think he's a quality player and a good price, I think at this current moment, he isn't a priority. We need a centre-back. We need a CDM. We need a proper right-back. Um, we maybe need a left-back. Like, we probably need four signs before we start thinking about more of a right-winger, which is Jeremy Frimpong. Now, if in a week's time, Sancho's gone, pilistri has gone, and... Uh, Anthony's gone on loan, then great. Go and sign Frimpong. He'd be an amazing addition in that right wing area. But as it stands at the moment, I just I just don't think it's a priority. And it's all good and well them offering him to us. But if we don't want him, then we're not going to buy him, are we? And I actually have a feeling that he's going to end up at Liverpool. Um, yeah, I just have a feeling he's going to go to Liverpool. But obviously we'll wait and see how that progresses. We know that, uh, you know, the Liverpool... Uh, Liverpool were eyeing up Xavi Alonso, weren't they? They were obviously looking at a couple of players from Bayer Leverkusen. So yeah, I think Jeremy Frimpong to Manchester United is probably more agent-driven, i.e. the agent trying to get his player a move, opposed to Manchester United actually wanting to sign him. I know we've been linked to him to eight for ages. I know that Eric Ten Hag likes him and I'm sure he would like to bring him to the club. But I'm sure Eric Ten Hag is having similar conversations to us where he's saying, Jeremy Frimpong sounds great. But where's my new centre-back? Where's my new CDM? What's going on with Luke Shaw and Malasia? Are they going to be injured again for the rest of the season? Do we need a new left-back? What's going on with wan Is he staying? Is he going? Do we need a new right-back? Like, I can't imagine they're at the point yet where they're thinking about luxury players like a right-winger, you know? It, ju it just doesn't seem very realistic. But you never know in football. Maybe Manchester United see it as an opportunity. Uh, they look at the Jeremy Frimpong situation and think we're not going to be able to get a player of his quality for 35 million. Let's go and get him. 23 years of age. Like, it would be a really, really good signing. I just think the timing is bad. And for that reason, I think Man United will miss out on him. And I think he will probably end up at Liverpool. But obviously, I'll keep you updated um, on that story as and when we get more news. Uh, the final story I wanted to bring to you really quickly is about Jared Branthwaite. So the news in the last couple of minutes is that apparently Jared Branthwaite has just rejected a new contract at Everton which opens the door to Manchester United going back in with a third bid for Jared Branthwaite. Now, should we go for a third bid? For anybody who's forgotten, we put in a bid of 35, rejected, and then we put in a bid of 45, which was rejected. Apparently, Manchester United would be willing to go as high as 50 million, but Everton wants 70 to 80. I, I just think we're so far off in the valuations that even if we go back in with 50, they're going to say no. And him rejecting the contract obviously sounds dramatic, right? But he has three years left of his current deal. So he could easily just be forced to stay at Everton for two, three years and run down his deal. Like, it's not like he has six months left and he's refusing a contract. He effectively just doesn't want to sign a long-term deal. That's the story here. But obviously it's been blown into purport out of proportion where everyone's like, he's going to sign for United. He hasn't signed a new contract. He's coming. But yeah, with three years left on his deal, it's going to be very hard to get him out of, of Everton uh, unless he, you know, hands in a transfer request and refuses to train. But... 
I can't see him doing that. But um, you can let me know what you think about all of those topics. Let me know about Jeremy Frimpong. Let me know about Jared Branthwaite. Um, I look forward to seeing what you have to say in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching. Please do make sure to smash a like and subscribe on your way out. This has been Daily Red Devil, and I'll speak to you all on the next one. Bye for now.